이번에는 나라박 소식입니다. 세계 역사에서 가장 위대한 주자를 꼽으라면 이 사람을 빼놓을 수 없을 겁니다. 바로 윈스턴 처칠인데요. 그의 리더십은 많이 알려져 있지만 정작 그의 신앙에 대해서는 그만큼 알려져 있지 않습니다. 그의 증손자가 쓴 책에 따르면 윈스턴 처칠은 굳건한 신앙을 지킨 인물이었다고 하는데요. 나치에 맞서며 절망을 이겨낸 그의 신앙 이야기 지금부터 전해드립니다. I definitely conclude, as Wallace does, that my great-grandfather had a strong faith. In those days, you didn't talk about your faith. You know, Churchill wasn't a religious figure. He was a prime minister. He believed that Jesus was a historic figure, that Jesus was, was, was the savior of the world. He believed those things. He believed in the Bible as an authentic, literal book that was inspired of God. He believed those things. In God and Churchill, the author cite a conversation between the prime minister and his bodyguard, Walter Thompson. While on a walk one day, they narrowly escaped a bomb. Churchill then turned to Thompson and said, don't worry, there is someone else looking after me. Walter Thompson misunderstood. And he said, do you mean Sergeant Davis? And great grandpa gave a small smile. He shook his head and said no. And he pointed to the sky. And he said, there is someone up there who has a mission for me to perform. And he intends to see that mission is performed. Sands decided to write the book after speaking with Churchill's official biographer, who told him of unexplored material regarding his faith. That led to the discovery of multiple examples where Churchill privately referred to his personal belief. One day, while discussing world leaders throughout history with Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery, Churchill spoke frankly about Jesus Christ. What do you think about Jesus Christ? Montgomery asks Churchill. And Churchill says, Jesus Christ was unsurpassed in his capacity to save sinners. Those were his words. We quote them in the book. Henley and Sands credit Churchill's nanny with teaching him the gospel. His nanny, Elizabeth Everest, had pumped the Word of God into him. And he, he analyzed things from that perspective. Upon this battle depends the survival of Christian civilization. Churchill's Christian worldview allowed him to clearly recognize Nazism as the pit of evil, even when others did not. He openly acknowledged that only God could see Britain through the war and encouraged the British to put their hope in him. As the will of God is in heaven, even so let him do. Unlike Adolf Hitler, great grandpa directed the hope of the people towards God. Whenever he used God or used a Bible quote within a speech, it was always to push the people's hope towards, towards God. Churchill also modeled Christian virtues like forgiveness. He appointed some of his critics to his wartime cabinet and refused to vilify the Germans. When you look at his speeches, you see when he's talking about the Nazis, he separates the Nazis from the German people. He wanted freedom for the people of Germany. And it was vital that we didn't repeat what happened at the end of the First World War, where Germany was just totally pushed aside and nobody wanted. Sands and Henley point out that Churchill led from a core belief in divine destiny. As a 16-year-old schoolboy, he prophesied to a friend that London would one day be attacked and that he would lead England to victory. To then state clearly and with confidence that not only are you going to be the leader at a time of war, but you're going to lead your country and your empire to victory, that's, that becomes absolutely impossible. But in the light of history in 1945, you see that that's actually the case. Sands and Henley say it's almost unbelievable how many times Churchill escaped death during his time in the Boer War and later in World War I. As a member of parliament in the 1930s, his public reputation sank as he warned of Hitler and the Nazis and spoke out against appeasement. In the end, Hitler's advance through Europe vindicated Churchill and silenced his critics, perfectly preparing him to become prime minister. When I warned them that Britain would fight on alone... God himself was intervening through this man in that period of history. So God will intervene in our history. He will raise up people like that. Sands and Henley say such a belief can provide hope today. 
when once again, the world is in need of a strong leader to stand up against the forces of darkness.